the things that we've looked at before are the Stirling numbers of the first kind. This is the signless variation. C and K is the number of permutations of N into K cycles. For example, over here I have one of the 35 possibilities for C of 5, 3, which is taking three cycles and putting the numbers 1 through 5, arranging them in a cycle. And of course, because it's a cycle, there's a difference between this and this. So what we can, another thing that we could do, instead of just counting the Stirling numbers um, in this way, and we know that we saw before that these guys are rather difficult to get a handle on, what happens if, instead of looking at it this way, what happens if we just add them up? So for all k. So we have k equals 1, because that's the fewest number of cycles that you could have. The most number of cycles you could have is n. That would represent the identity of c of n k. What happens when we add all of these up? Well, we can think of it combinatorially. We're just adding more tables. But now we can allow that some of the tables are empty. And that's totally fine. But now what are we saying? We're saying, give me any permutation. I don't mind how many cycles you have. So this is just n factorial. And there's a lovely recurrence relation for n factorial, which is that n factorial is equal to n times n minus 1 factorial. And we can think of this as a recurrence relation and a rather simple one. And this holds for the Stirling numbers of the first kind. So now we can ask ourselves, what happens if we do the same thing for the Stirling numbers of the second kind? So for Stirling numbers of the second kind, remember, we don't have the cycles anymore. We don't care about how things are arranged like that. What we care about is how they're arranged into blocks. So here I would create a set partition by throwing my numbers into these boxes. And of course we had formulas for these, well rather ways to derive these, and we can get a formula for the Stirling numbers of the second kind um, using some of our generating function techniques and also using inclusion exclusion. And we saw that this is one of the 25 examples of how I could do a set partition of the numbers 1 to 5 into three blocks. But another interesting thing that we can ask ourselves is what happens if we add these all up? So that's a perfectly legitimate question. We say, okay, now I'm allowed to have empty blocks. So that's what it comes down to if I want to add these up. If I say I don't mind about the number of blocks, well, the most blocks I could have that would be non-empty is five. Here, this configuration is the same as this. I don't care about where I've put the blocks, only which numbers are together. So I can think about adding these guys up. So the sum, again, there could be the fewest number of blocks is one, and the most is n, of s of n k. And I can ask myself, well, what can I do with these numbers? So it turns out these numbers are very interesting, just like their counterpart. Before I move off, let's just remind you for the Stirling numbers, what did we get when we added them up? We got permutations, something very combinatorial, and the enumeration is quite simple, right? The recurrence relation here for the number of permutations is very, very simple, whereas the recurrence relations we saw for the, both the types of Stirling numbers were quite complex. So we can ask ourselves, does this have a nice interpretation? Well, it has a definition. So we're going to call this the bell numbers. The bell numbers denoted b of n count exactly this, the number of set partitions of n into any number of blocks. So let me just transfer this over. k equals 1 to n of s of n k. And we can try to compute the bell numbers. So let's do that. Let's bring our blocks back. And let's do an example. So let's try to compute b of 3. That's anything more than that, it gets a little onerous. So we'll take these guys away. And we've got three blocks. Now let's see what we can do with them. Remember that we can leave the blocks empty now because we're allowing ourselves to have any number of blocks. So here's one thing that I could do. I could put each number in its own block. So that would be, I'll maybe denote with slashes when they're in different blocks. So there's one arrangement. Okay, here's another thing. I could put one and two together and leave three by itself. Or I could put the one with the three and leave the two by itself. Or I could put the two and the three and leave the one by itself. That's another one I could do. And of course, I could just stick them all in the same box. So I get the box that's one, two, three. So you can see in total here, I have five. So B of three is equal to five. So five is not quite as nice a number as something like uh, six, which 
factors nicely, but there's still a chance that we're going to have a good recurrence relationship, and that's what we want to look for next. So how can we come up with a recurrence relationship for these Sterling numbers? Well, let's write down some data first. So if we just want to compute B of n for a few values of n, what do we get? Well, there's one way to do nothing, okay? If n is 1, there's one way to set partition. When n is 2, that's also pretty easy to see. You can put the numbers together. We're separate. When n is 3, we've just computed it. It's 5, and I'll tell you the next number is, uh, sorry, 15, and then 52, and then they continue to grow. And we want to get a sense of how these things grow. So here's the recurrence relationship that tells us. So it turns out, theorem, that b of n plus 1 is equal to the sum from k equals 0 to n of n choose k b of k. So this is a rather interesting recurrence relation. We have these binomial coefficients showing up and all of the smaller terms, right? So this is, a, this is very different from the numeration that we got just for permutations, but let's see how this works. Let's do an example um, based on the data we have, say with n equals three, so n plus one is four. So this will tell me that b of four, which is what I'm after, should be three choose zero, b of zero, plus three choose one, b of one, plus, um, sorry, three choose two, b of two, plus three choose three, b of three. So I have all the data out here, so let's just watch this work. So three choose zero, there's one way to do nothing, so that's one, and b of zero is one, right? And then three choose one is three, and b of one, I see up here, is one. So let me maybe write down my n's, one, one, Oh, sorry, 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. Okay, and then we're going to get 3 choose 3. Sorry, 3 choose 2. And B of 2, I can see, is 2. And B of 3 is what we've computed over here, so it's going to be 1 times 5. So we can add this up, and we can just check. We've got 1 plus 3 plus 6 plus 5, and indeed that is equal to 15. So the recurrence relationship checks out. But what we want to do when we think about how would we prove something like this Again, we want to think about it in terms of the structure of the block. So now, if I have, say, the numbers one, um, 1 to 5 again, and they could be put anyway in any set partition, we can ask ourselves, well, how would, I, how would I come up with this recurrence relation? One thing you could do is you could use the recurrence relationship for the Stirling numbers and do induction on that based on the fact that we know that these Bell numbers are sums of Stirling numbers. But another thing that you can do is think of n plus 1. So maybe we'll do the example with 4. n plus 1 in this case would be 4. And you could think, okay, where is the number 4? It's in one of these blocks. What happens if I take this block away? What am I left with? Well, I'm left with a set partition of fewer numbers. And how many options did I have for which numbers were left? Well, it's a binomial coefficient. It's some kind of choice. So I'll leave this as an exercise to fill out the details of, but this should give us some intuition. If you play around with this and come up with a combinatorial proof, it'll give you some intuition on how these bell numbers behave. And in the next video, we'll see how we can use generating functions and this recurrence relationship to derive a formula.